Um, excuse me, do you mind if we like ask you a quick question? Sure. Uh, do you happen to know anything about Virginia Carpenter or have you ever heard of her? I don't know. I have not. No, I have not. On June 1st, 1948, Virginia Carpenter arrived on campus of Texas State College for Women. Now known as Texas Women's University in Denton. She disappeared that day and was never seen again, making this the oldest cold case in Texas history. battling an illness for two years and unfortunately he committed suicide. But skipping ahead, Virginia graduated high school in 1944 and she was said to have many boyfriends in her lifetime, including a failed engagement, but we'll talk about that later. Now, she did go to TSCW, which is the Texas State College for Women in Denton, which is now TWU but she had to drop out to take care of her ill mother. But she was planning to return after she worked at an insurance company to get money for school and pay off all those hospital bills. And our story starts when she's 21 years old, 5'4", weighing 120 pounds, and her mother described her as not a strong girl. Hazel Carpenter was Virginia's mom, and they were very, very close, and Hazel believed that Virginia would tell her everything eventually. She claimed she knew her daughter was dead from the beginning, and she also claimed that she traced more leads than she can remember and wrote several letters to newspapers. In one of them, it was a tell-all where she told all of the details she could remember about her daughter, including some personal ones. Apparently, Virginia wasn't very good at art. Okay, but she was horrible at drawing everyone except her father. She drew her father very well, yes. apparently. What does that have to do with anything? I don't know. I don't know. I just felt like that was important. <laughs> she also wrote a letter to the Denton Record Chronicle about an ad she wanted run in which she confirmed that she packed Virginia's bags and trunk herself and she sent this letter in August of 1948 so that was about a month or so after Virginia went missing. Virginia was her only daughter and she claimed that Virginia was too good for dating but contradicted herself and said that she had several boyfriends. Speaking of boyfriends, let's talk about boyfriend number one. Boyfriend number one was Bill. There's not much to say about him. He was a UT Austin student and it was just an unrequited love, so there wasn't much going on. Boyfriend number two was Mac, who was a Texas A&M student that Virginia and her mother met after going to the hospital. Virginia was a near for appendicitis and her mother was recovering from another illness. So Mac and Virginia actually fell in love, got engaged, and they even set a wedding date. But the parents and grandparents didn't approve. In fact, Virginia's mother said, I loved Mac because of his fine qualities and because he was so good to me, but I couldn't see their two personalities living together in harmony. So that wedding was called off. I would like to throw in the fact that when doing research for this, the only mention we found of Mac was in a random newspaper article from like two decades after she went missing. So. That's pretty important. I, <laughs> I feel like I feel like if we're talking about a girl who went missing, 
Um, her ex-lover might be an important detail. Yes. Then we have boyfriend number three, which is Kenneth Branham, or Kenny, who met Virginia 10 days before the disappearance. Her mother said that he acted like he was in love with her, and he worked in Dallas after the disappearance. A good important note to mention is that his name was also known as Willie in some newspapers, but that can be due to discrepancies during the time in the press. Yes. Speaking of during the time and during the press, uh, we have one of the most uh, well-known um, suspects, who is Zachary or Edgar Jack Ray Zachary. You mentioned having four first names. Yes. But he was married to Mrs. Zachary, first name unknown, and they were estranged well before the disappearance happened. Um, together they had four girls and one boy, exciting, I think, and he supported them by being a cab driver. Some detectives that were involved were Dallas Sheriff Bill Decker, then in Chief of Police, i.e. Andy Anderson. Fantastic name. Honestly. <laughs> then in County Sheriff Wiley Barnes and Deputy Police Chief Jack Shepard. Yes. Also, um, important, last but not least, uh, we have Texas Ranger Lewis Strickler um, of Gainesville. Uh, but he believed in his uh, Texas Ranger kind of memoir, he wrote that he believed that the Virginia Carpenter case was probably the most or the greatest unsolved case in the Southwest. Um, he also passed away in June 25th of 2009. I was about six years old, I think. Can Love I that. that. <laughs> <laughs> important fact that I have to mention. Um, that like is extremely important to the thing. Um, also, another thing that's extremely important to the case, he was not originally assigned to the case, um, and he wasn't just interested either. He devoted about nine years of his life doing hundreds of long distance phone calls and traveling a thousand miles, tracing leads around. Um, and he even devoted a part of his little Texas Rangers me memoir um, to the Virginia Carpenter case. I just want to say that if you're obsessed with um, a random girl that went missing in the 40s for several decades to the point where you write her into your autobiography, I think you need to chill out. So we've discussed the key players of this case, from Virginia Carpenter to Texas Ranger Lewis Rickler. We all want to thank you so much for watching and we like to ask you to turn in next time where we discuss the details of the case, all the random things that happened that led up to her disappearance, and everything else. And we're the David County Junior Historians! Thanks for watching! Bye!